All right, it's been a while, um, but I've been busy working on this stupid little program. Actually, I've been having a lot of fun working on it. Move this over. Whoa. And uh, yeah, it's it's a basic little drawing app. And it's made with um, Godot Engine or Godot. I'm not sure how to pronounce it, but anyway, I made it to specifically to use on on a phone, and uh, it's been really fun. I've been taking it on trips and, and going painting on the weekends and stuff, and it's working pretty good. So anyway, I just want to do a quick little painting here, and hopefully. I'll, be better than just me talking. Um, let's see. So it's got some color sliders up here. RGB. Pretty simple. But it's surprising how many artists out there have never used RGB. And so I've had a lot of people telling me that it, like, you know, they're using this and RGB is so weird and esoteric and why, why did you make it so weird but I'm like this is this just RGB you should know how to use it and then but I think people actually enjoy messing around and smudging around these colors here because it it's kind of fun and uh, I think you kind of learn a little bit when you when you use these sliders you learn a little bit about how color works like how how saturation works where the closer these are together, the more the less saturated it is. Or the farther apart, the the more rich the color will be. Just little things like like that are fun to discover. Um, okay, so yeah, we got that, that huge gradient tool, which is really useful. Um, what else do we have? Maybe I'll try to get this orange in there. Pretty red. Hmm. Could also try to do this like this with the fill tool. This is another tool that I've always wanted in a painting tool, and surprisingly, not many of them have it. The only time I've seen this tool is in um, Proc uh, not Procreate, Alchemy. It's pretty kind of old now, but this is a really cool um, experimental program that had a lot of nice uh, features like the lasso. So, I mean, you can just block in stuff real quick with this lasso. That's what I usually do. And then after, you can tweak it. Also, I just, I have a eyedropper in here now, although I'm trying to not use it that much because it kind of robs you of, of some colors if you, use, if you abuse the eyedropper. But um, let's see. Yeah, so you could do this, and then we also have something here I'll show you in a minute. I'm going to make this purple area up here. It's kind of darker. So just added this in last night, M, which is mixer, and this lets you just go like that. Can blend between two things. You could even, let's see, let's go from the sky into the cloud, let's see what happens. It even blends into the UI color, which is kind of useless, but it's interesting. And you can 
set your own colors here with the mixer too. So it's sort of like that the last gradient tool that we had, or the first gradient tool, in that you can choose the first color. But I've uh, removed that first gradient tool because I think this is a better version of it. So we don't really need the other one. Seems like a lot of a few people that use it use the program haven't even haven't discovered the uh, gradient tool yet in general. So this will just be an extra treat. What am I looking for? Blue. Oops. Man, my sky color is really wackadoo, huh? That kind of sucks. There's like this really nice little pink. I'm also th also thinking about converting this to CMYK at some point. So this gradient here is just a transparent gradient. So depending on what you need. This one's cool, but sometimes I think it looks a little bit cheesy, like it's just too transparent. And especially when you're laying over it. I like the um the solid solid look. Hey Vikrant, hey Navidad. Um, I was uh, basically working on this th this thing. This is my project now. Um, but and I'm still pretty busy working on it. I think uh, I I want to get the iOS version out and then I'll calm down on it. But yeah, a lot of uh, artists seem to use iOS which I didn't I didn't realize <laughs> which is I guess it's kind of dumb but of course yeah artists love iOS I don't know why I thought it would wouldn't be a problem but I need to do that but Apple man Apple is such such a pain it took me like two seconds to export this project for Android but Apple like you have to buy you have to pay them for a developer account and then you have to sign you have to have a Mac to export you can't export from Windows um, there's all these like keys and certificates and two-factor authentication and they just make it very very annoying. <laughs> There's a lot of like paperwork, or not paperwork, but forms and things, and 
signing up for things. Anyway. Just get this thing. Oh. Well, it's okay. While we're while I'm trying to get the Mac version working. I'm just going to keep continue improving so by the time it gets to iOS it should be decent I hope oops my sky ran out Can we just let Apple die as artists and professionals? I bought a Mac Mini just to export. What a pain. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking of doing too. It's like, oh no. Waste. Wasteful. Sorry guys, I'm I'm uh Okay, let's see. I gotta finish this up real quick. Okay, so we have this giant gradient down on the bottom and it let's see it gets pretty orange here. Just say it's like that for now. And then we have some water. Maybe I should put in, let's save this. I'll put in the black or this, this, this um, silhouette for a second here just to compare colors. Just temporary. Okay, it's something like that. This is pretty bright. And the color is kind of tricky because I'm not sure if it's blue or orange or red. It's like all three at the same time. Let's see. And uh, also this working with this thing kind of forces you to make big, big strokes and generalize a little bit, which I, I like to paint that way anyway. So this is a lot of fun to work this way. Okay, let's see if we can do a mixer. Oh yeah. Yeah, that's pretty good.
Um, yeah, so, guys, sorry, I'm, I'm being a horrible host. Um, what, what kind of tools so far here would you want to see? Or is there anything, any ideas that you are popping in as you see this go? Oh, let's see. Navidad says, I hope you never add layers. It's kind of more badass without layers. Yeah, I agree. And layers is... I've, I've never liked layers, man. They're they're just annoying, and then, then it gets really complicated, and then you just don't feel like working anymore. And you got to name them and be all organized, and nobody's got time for that, right? Um... Man, this, okay, this mixer thing is pretty sweet. I'm excited. Let's go green, like aqua, for down here. Man, these reflection colors are so tricky. Never sure exactly what color I'm working with here. Oh, also it's going from black, so let me, let me stick that in first with a regular gradient. See, like this, this is the part I don't like about regular gradients is when they overlap, it looks really cheesy. So maybe I need to go back in with this. Opacity, hmm, that's a tough, well, I mean, we got opacity for gradient, but I don't know. I Opacity would mean having another slider, and uh, I don't know, maybe it could go on the bottom, but I'm not sure. Maybe some pixel tool, like, like, well... I'll have I'll probably eventually have the ability to change the resolution. Um, I just doubled it like the other day, so before it was pretty chunky, pixely. But I'll probably have a some option to adjust that eventually. But yeah, that would be nice pixel tool. Or all right, so we can put that red color up top and then gradate down to like black in the corner here. using this mixer brush and wait what other colors were there there there's like this grayish color oops I guess it would be good to be able to control the direction or like slant of it. 
because it's kind of tough to get these angles here. Hmm. Let's get this crazy red in here. It is kind of tough to do masking stuff where like if you need to, to have a shape and then put a gradient into it, that is kind of difficult right now. So I need to figure out a way to do that without introducing without making it too complicated. The only way right now is just to go over it with the background color, which kind of sucks. But I guess that's how you would actually do it with normal painting. Let's get some rectangle action in here. Seven sign over here. I've painted that maybe like five times so far. See that eyedropper becomes a crutch. I, I keep going back to it and then I get lazy. I don't pick my colors anymore. I can't believe people are doing this on their with their finger. Kind of tricky. Turns out you 
All right, guys, I think uh, it's time for me to cut it. But anyway, I hope this was entertaining a little bit. And I hope you'll check out this program. I got a link in the description. And I'll be, I'm still working on the iOS. It's coming soon. It's a bit of a pain, but we'll, we'll get it. And yeah, let me know what you think. And yeah, have a good day. Let's see if there's anybody down here. Do, 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 do. Eyedropper tool would be most important. Um, yeah, we got an eyedropper right here. Boop. That's our eyedropper. Um, do, do. Question about Boolean Pi. What is Live Laser? It just um, it works with 2D shapes. So if you have a 2D shape and you do a Live Laser, it's going to cut through with the 2D shape in the direction that, that the 2D shape is facing. Um, what do you try to do with this app? Is just for fun or you find that other painting application has a lack of features? Yeah, I, I do find that other painting applications are lacking sometimes, especially with just really simple stuff like this. You know, this these kind of things will usually take a few clicks or they take longer to do than they should. So yeah, this, this program is all about making things very fast and, and easy um, and the least amount of clicking. Okay, anyway, that's it. See you guys next time. Thanks for joining in and have a good day.